Okay, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Wilborn. We are ready to jump into the, today's session of On the Radar, live market updates. Uh, got one, uh, I've got a couple of stocks we'll take a look at, uh, look pretty promising. And uh, so let's go ahead and kick on over and get started. And again, I appreciate and I love doing these sessions every day. And we're doing them, not every day, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 12 noon Pacific time, going into the final hour of the trading day. And uh, we've got a little bit of a follow through going on in the market today with prices up on all the indexes. Uh, both uh, the S&P, I think IWM actually is pushing towards, uh, it actually did break out again. Um, the NASDAQ holding back just a little bit, or really close to hitting a new breakout level. So if you are enjoying uh, these sessions uh, that we're doing and on the radar with, uh, and also the stock picks um, to give you ideas about how to do either option or, or stock trades, uh, please leave a comment, uh, give us a thumbs up or give us a heart um, and, uh, and also share, uh, please share your information with uh, other traders uh, who might benefit from uh, what we're providing. Uh, I've been doing this technical analysis stuff for a long time, and um, I was, you know, was trained, uh, did all my training for technical analysis, a lot of it through the uh, uh, Market Technicians Association. And so let's get in and take a look at what's going on. On the spies, <coughs> excuse me, on the spiders, as you can see, we are breaking out to new highs. Uh, I will, basically, the... The TSI appears to be moving back up. Uh, it has not jumped under the up above the 40 plus 41 level, which is uh, normally what we'd expect. But we're uh, as we go in to make new highs, well, let's take a real quick peek at. Well, we'll do that. We'll save that for the Qs and the, the Nasdaq, because or the Qs and the uh, uh, IWM for the Russell. <clears throat> what I'm looking at here is basically. There is nothing seen, <clears throat> excuse me just a second. <clears throat> okay, there is nothing that basically is saying um, that we should be uh, concerned about this moving upwards. Excuse me just one second. I'll get a little bit of water here. Nothing on the chart is saying that uh, we should be uh, concerned to the downside yet. All the moving averages are stacked heading up. Uh, what we need to do basically is just wait for a pullback on the S&P if we want to be trading the S&P. On the NASDAQ representative, which is, of course, the Q's. Having some bandwidth issues today, and it's okay. Okay, as you can see, price axes are moving up, almost taking out the highs from this past Monday. Uh, matter of fact, it may have already taken out the highs from Monday we're sitting at. Oh, uh, 315.29, the highs for today are sitting at, at 315.18. So we're about 11 cents away from taking out the highs. Uh, and it appears, again, everything is in track. The, uh, uh, all the moving averages are stacked in the bullish uh, direction. We had, came back and retested about the 20-day moving average with an inverted hammer. And pow, we are taking off from there. Uh, TSI appears to be getting ready to cross over to the upside, which is also a very positive thing to be keeping your eye on. You know what I forgot to do, guys? I forgot to see if there's anybody online with us. I apologize for that. Okay, hey, Kenny, if you're still with us. Excellent. There we go. So hello, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm basically doing this off of Michelle's phone. I just got so wrapped up in watching what's going on with the market. <clears throat> So if um, so, that's what we got with the cues. Nothing to do. This was a normal pullback. 
A lot of crazy stuff, of course, going on up at the Capitol, as you saw yesterday. Um, the market is actually handling it fairly well. I'm, a, you know, I won't say I'm shocked because we have to be very careful. Uh, our beliefs based on our biases can get us into a lot of trouble, and so we have to be very careful in how we trade our biases. Try to go in without any biases, but sometimes that's really a challenge to do. My bias was that this disruption in the capital was going to cause the market to fl uh, flail about and fall. Hasn't happened yet. So again, it gets back to trade the chart that's in front of you. The uh, next uh, entity we're going to take a look at is IWM. IWM. is also breaking out to new highs. There we go. IWM is the strongest of the indexes, which um, it was a little bit of a lagger last year. Uh, part of the, uh, I, I, I find this very interesting. There are a lot of banks in, I, in the uh, Russell, and so that may be part of the deal on what's pushing this higher. Uh, but again, at this particular point, let's wait for a pullback into the moving averages which may be up at this breakout point, which is uh, the highs. Let me give it to you. It is. Okay, the high up about 201.18. We would anticipate a pullback towards that to trigger a, a long uh, position. That would be either a option or buying uh, IWM. Or, in this case, I would look at uh, trading in TNA, which is the uh, leverage ETF for the three-time leverage ETF for IWM. But again, let's see what happens. Now, one thing is of note here, and I'll just load, lay this on you. Let's see if I can make a drawing here. There we go. Is what is going on with I, you know, the Russell or IWM is we are getting a little bit of negative divergence as this is moving up to higher highs. And so we'll be watching that. Same on the market forecast. A little bit of negative divergence. Uh, oftentimes, doesn't mean we can't climb higher, but sometimes we keep, we want to keep track of those issues of negative divergence because, hey, thanks, Jason. Hey, good to see you, man. How's the golf team doing? <laughs> Love it. So we want to keep uh, our eye on that because oftentimes negative divergence can, in fact, be a prerequisite for a stronger pullback. At this particular point in time, it is not happening yet. And, um, and again, the trend continues to be up. The other thing I will keep my eye on is the upper side of the trend of the trend channel that it's been working in. Let's go ahead and just draw this upper trend across this area yeah, from about there. Let's go ahead and just draw this on up approximately to there. And as you can see, price action is working right up towards the upper side of that uh, trend channel. And so a reversal could happen. Uh, to basically pull back. It's still working within the trend channel. So we don't want to get all, you know, going, ah, we're going to, you know, we're going to fall out of the sky. No, I'm not going to take any bearish trades until I get some confirmation that we're, in fact, uh, the top is in. And right now, the top is not in. We'll talk again on next Monday or Tuesday because it could be in by then. Hey, okay, let's run over. Here's two entities that we've been following that have started to come through for us. We are going on PayPal. Arrows down there. There we go. As you can see, PayPal is breaking out above the, um, uh, now we actually got into a trade on PayPal on at about the 227 level. And as we can see, we're starting to push on up. This is part of our uh, top five uh, autopilot trading system. <clears throat> we're anticipating a move going into earnings, uh, you know, up here 
back towards the old highs. So I'll take a little bit off if we get up to about 330, uh, about 338 and then 344. Have an extension up to about 354. Will we make it before earnings? Don't know. Uh, right now, if you, you know, basically are looking at potential of trading this into earnings, uh, I would look for a little bit of a pullback back towards the eight-day moving average, average about the 232 level. Take a real quick hop over here to the, as we see, what do we got? We have earnings coming up, 127. So we're about two weeks away from earnings, two to three weeks away from earnings. Uh, going into the earnings, I also like to do some of the option trades where I will jump on a spread that is out of the money with the anticipation that the price action going into earnings will take it through the uh, the spread because oftentimes I can get into that for you know in, you know very low price and if the uh, price action does take it through with going into earnings uh, it can be very rewarding. Uh, speaking of which, I have one stock I want to show you right now. That was uh, see that was PayPal. Uh, let's. I'll come back to the one I, I want to show you. Um, that's not right. AMD. There we go. AMD. Should, yeah, excellent. Okay, we highlighted AMD earlier in the week. And this is a trade that we I basically jumped on when the price action was down here at about $90.60. Again, part of the uh, power the top the power rank elite top five trading system, the autopilot trading system, jumped on it as it was bouncing off the 34, looking at a break to break above this. It's 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 pushing. And so if we break out, I'm looking for a move all the way back up to the 97 level. I This is one of those that I did, in fact, put in a spread. I also bought the stock, and I also am doing a directional option. Um, why am I doing that? Well, one of the reasons why I'm doing all three is because we are running into earnings on this one. Earnings on AMD, I think it's around the 20, I want to say the 24th. Okay, the 26th before the market opens. Um, with these, one of the things I really love to trade is I love to trade earnings runs. And one of the way I do that is I maintain and keep a stable of stocks that are that typically get a good run going into earnings. Here's a picture of those stocks. And if you, um, there we go. No, that's not the picture, Dennis. Let me go get... Uh, there we go. As you can see, there and I've got about 40 stocks on there and and I don't, you know, it's good to have a good stable of stocks you can go to that you can count on doing some moves. As you can tell right now, I've got positions in uh PayPal, I've got positions in uh AMD. I will try to lay on and I try to lay on a position about 2 weeks before earnings. I don't try to do every one of them. But normally I can count on doing a small, you know, uh, options trade with it, generating every quarter about four to five to six thousand dollars worth of profits. Does it happen all the time? No, you know, every time, no. But it it happens all the time where you will catch a few of these, and they'll run into earnings, which is absolutely awesome. And we can either buy the stock, do a spread trade on the options. Uh, like that. So I really like that. And that's one of the things I want to take you to, to, to next is what about Etsy? Etsy is, I think, providing us an excellent setup. And this is my, my stock of the day. I've got a couple of things going on with Etsy to pay attention to. Let me grab my drawing utensil. I've got TSI. Basically, look like it's running, rolling up. The market forecast uh, pr um, uh, momentum has not shifted up yet. However, the l shorter and the the uh, uh, micro uh, momentum lines are starting to turn up. What do I have on the? What is my price action telling me? Price action is saying I have a bullish Harami. Bullish Haramis are oftentimes. Uh, great signals that we're going to make a run where to back to the upside. 
When is earnings coming up? Earnings coming up on 224. So that's about six weeks out. Perfect time to be looking at if this goes into an earnings run, I can do two cash generating trades on it. And what I'll be looking at, I'll be looking at this this evening, is uh, if I get a pullback towards the 34, I would probably want to buy, I would want to buy the 170, about approximately the 170 call. It expires in two weeks. And then I would sell the 175 call, or uh, 170 to 175 call. I would sell that with the anticipation that over the next two weeks, price action is going to go up and through that level. I know that the uh, uh, the anticipated move on this stock is, I think, about $10 per week. Let me jump over there and we can just take a real quick trade look at that. If it will show up, which it's not going to bug us. Uh, let me see if I can move that over. No, I cannot. Anyway, um, I'm sorry. Yes, we can. Uh, so if I go out two weeks, which is about the 15th or even the 22nd, it shows here that see the plus or minus 15? That is plus or minus expected move of plus or minus $15. And so would that take me through that spread? It certainly would, which is exactly the way I would want to trade this particular um, th this particular entity. So that's what we have for, like I said, Etsy's looking good. This is you know, looking like a really nice pullback. Let's throw a fib on it just to be careful. A Fibonacci to see how far we've actually pulled back. I actually know it's about 23%. So we're at the upper echelon there. Let me go ahead and grab that there. There we go. It may be more than that. Yeah, okay. We actually came back to the top of the fib box. It was a 382 uh, retracement. So it's in gear to potentially bounce from there. Uh, it is it appears to be like it has stopped going down. We'll see. It could drop all the way down to the 50, and that's okay. But I'll be taking a look at that for a, a putting in a conditional order tomorrow. So that's all I've got today, guys. If you... Uh, I can take a take time to look at one stock if you have one. Jason Kenny, hey Kenny, uh, really like to chat with you this afternoon. If you could uh, uh, send me your number number over a DM, I want to catch up with you and I want to see what you're doing with the. Uh, uh, I want to see what you're doing with the uh, that trading platform you're using. Because I'm a think or swim guy and I just want to see what you're doing. So, okay. Uh, if that's it, please tell your friends. If you're new to us, we post this both on YouTube. We post it on Instagram TV. If you're going to Instagram TV, please uh, follow me on Instagram TV, Active Trend Trader, and, uh, and um, also save any of the postings that we do. And then if you're uh, watching on uh, YouTube, please subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, because tomorrow, what we have tomorrow, we have... Uh, how to make money trading stocks and options. That's a live stream. Goes off at um, it goes off at uh, eleven o'clock Pacific time every Friday, and then on Saturday nine o'clock a.m. we have an online meeting of the Bay Area Money Makers, which is an IBD meetup, and we do that at nine o'clock. And at this particular time, it's an open house. There's no charge to attend, and we're going to be talking specifically about how to strategically plan for greater profits in 2021. And so until next Tuesday, because we are live Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, and Thursday, aloha, God bless everybody.